Hey guys, double lift here with the Wall Class Beginner's Guide to Vein. For runes, you always want to go attack speed quints, AD reds, armor yellows, and flat MR blues. So Vein's just like any other AD carry where you go the standard 2190 on uh, masteries. It's even more important that you go the 9 defense because she has such low base HP, but otherwise it's just completely standard. Scaling on Vayne, uh, mostly you want to go Q level 1 and then put 3 points into W. At level 4 you're going to go, or level 3 you're going to go Condemn. But after you put 3 points into W, then you max Q. The reason being, you don't really need the extra 40-50 uh, damage on your W after you put 3 points into it. It's sufficient enough. So level 10 you'll have 3 points W and 5 points Q. So start off with D-Blade and Potions, just like everything else. Um, and on your first base, depending on how much gold you have, you either want to go Longsword if you have only enough for the Longsword, and then Doran's Blade if you only have enough for D-Blade. But ideally, you're going to back with either a Vamp Scepter or a Bilgewater. Most of the time, because Van has a weak landing phase, you're going to back with around 1,000 gold, and you won't have enough for your Bilgewater, so you just get Vamp Scepter and a bunch of potions. Afterwards, you just want to build the Vamp Scepter into Bilge, into Bork, which is your big first item. Uh, after that, it's really up to you. Generally, I try to go um, Phantom Dancer into Triforce as my second and third items, and then fourth item you can either choose Infinity Edge or a defensive item, most of the time Infinity Edge. Um, she builds a lot differently than most AD carries, so just kind of use your own discretion. Third item Trinity Force is not normal, but I think it's very good. Uh, Vayne right now is not very good in Solo Q meta. Uh, patch 4.19, it's... Not a great patch for Vayne because she doesn't really get any big advantages as opposed to the OPs, which right now are Corky, Graves, and Lucian. Uh, you want to stay straight away from playing Vayne into these kind of bursty, high damage, AD carries, low range, because that's exactly why Vayne, what beats Vayne in lane, is champions with direct nukes, such as Corky and Graves and Lucian. Um, she's actually super weak right now, so I wouldn't recommend playing her in solo queue. But if you feel really confident and you really want to practice Vayne, she's not that bad. You just need to learn how to lose lane gracefully and then come back with a board power spike. Uh, laning phase, actually, she's super punishing. Even though she's weak overall, if your opponent missteps once, they can get condemned into a wall and die. She has great uh, protection against ganks in that way because she can push the jungler away. She also has great gank synergy. So uh, there's probably going to be a lot of jungle pressure in the main lane, and that's to your advantage. Other than that, she has super high mobility. Level 10, you're probably going to have 5 points Q if you max 3 points W, 5 points Q. Um, that's also around the time that you're going to have your Bork. So her insane mobility just allows her to pick off people who are making mistakes overextending. It happens all the time, even in challenger games. So in lower level games, people will always overextend, play badly, and then you can just all on them with your ulti, Bork them, and then it's just a free kill. Uh, Vayne just has an awful inning phase. So levels 1, 2, 3, she's really not that good, and you have to outplay. For the most part, you want to work on your tumble timings to make sure that you don't get hit by Foss Bombs, Buckshots, uh, Piercing Lights, stuff like that. Just skill shots. He, she, if you do get hit by a skill shot, she has such terrible base stats that you'll generally die. But um, yeah, you just you just want to survive, I guess, landing phase and try not to play too aggressive. Just get CS when you can and wait for your big first item. Uh, the best supports with Vayne are generally the ones that can just protect her and the ones that don't go in. So you don't want like a Leona or uh, a Braum or something like that. You want a Janna, a Nami, a Soraka, something that will allow you to survive laning phase and play passively and work off of the enemy trying to shut you down and play too overly aggressive. So Janna can tornado them and put them in a bad spot. Nami can bubble them, put them in a bad spot. You, you want a, a defensive support rather than an offensive support. So um, in that way... Vayne just synergizes with supports that can buff her up, as opposed to supports that operate well alone. So you don't want, uh, for example, like an Annie or a Braum, like I said. Uh, Vayne's lightning phase is terrible, so just you can play aggressive level 1. Actually, level 1 Vayne is pretty strong. She has super high mobility, and tumble allows you to dodge a lot of skill shots. So if you're looking to outplay, look to outplay with a pretty decent level 1 trade, and then get that level 2 first. If Vayne gets a level 2 advantage, which she should almost never get, uh, you can play super aggressive, and you can choose between um, Silver Bolts or Condemn. A lot of people will misposition level 2, and then you'll get the Condemn off and kill them. But other than that, uh, actually as the lane progresses further and further, Vayne doesn't really get any damage, but 
other AD carries get higher ranks on their big nukes, like Boss Bomb or Lucian's Q. So you want to try to play less and less aggressive as you get closer and closer to 6. And then at level 6, you can either look to all-in or just base and get your first big buy. Uh, in team fights, you don't want to be the first one to go in. Uh, I see this mistake all the time. You're really eager to get in there. You really have low range. 550 is not that great. And the big thing about Vayne is everyone's looking to kill you because, I mean, Vayne is just such a big glass cannon. Everyone knows, just focus the Vayne, let's kill her first. So you want to make sure that your frontline initiates first and everyone on the enemy team's focus and attention is put on someone else. And that's when you come in with your ulti and try to clean up. Uh, you don't want to immediately follow up on any sort of CC or initiation that happens because people will be looking to turn that on you really quickly. Uh, other than that, Late game, she just does a lot of damage. In team fights, she does a lot of damage. You just need to make sure you're alive to do it. Try not to chase into the back line. Just kill the front line. She's a super good tank killer, so you don't need to chase into the back line unless you're confident that you can get like a pentakill or something or, or insta-kill their AD carry and AP carry at the same time. Uh, generally, just try to stay alive. You'll, your kit just allows you to kill everything in front of you. Tip number one for Vayne is uh, the E flash or Condemn flash. Uh, most people... You're looking to get, get that angle on the wall stun, you're going to flash and then condemn. Uh, much quicker and a lot harder to react to is the E flash, which accomplishes the same thing, but kind of overlaps your flash with the condemn uh, startup animation. So this allows you to get those quick wall stuns without anybody being able to really react to the animation of your E casting. Uh, in this way, you can make a lot of fancy plays. You can even kind of push someone into your tower. If they're on top of you and you're close to your tower, you can E and then flash over them and push them back towards your tower. There's just a lot of fancy stuff that you can do with this trick, so uh, I recommend using it a lot, especially in lane. Tip number two would probably be the your ability to use Brush as Vayne. She already has a one-second stealth between her tumbles, but that doesn't necessarily keep you cloaked all the time. Um, you want to fight around Brush really well, so you come out of your tumble, your stealth, you hit them, and they can see you for a brief second. You can actually just dip back into a brush until your, your tumble comes back up, which allows you to essentially keep stealth every single time until your next tumble is up. Um, there's so many fancy things you can do with brush. You can, you can even tumble into a brush, stealth, and then they won't know which brush you're in. So there's just so many jukes that you can do with the fact that she has stealth and the fact that brushes keep you stealth. Um, just keep in mind the kind of tricks you can play on your opponents with the kind of double stealth mechanics that she has. That's it for this guide. Hope it helped. If you have any questions, tweet me at CLG Doublelift.